told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. I started posting it everywhere already but it goes like this it's in, i don't know what facebook face face group it facebook group it's in me gustaría que las personas que viven en alta vela y sus alrededores sean conscientes de que annie garcia y walter ibarra son estafadores se conectan en línea y piden donaciones para su fundación grc yo caí víctima di cientos de dólares en donaciones durante una transmisión en vivo poco después cuando pregunté en qué se usaría el dinero ella me bloqueó de redes sociales Días después de que yo donara, ella se fue de vacaciones. Los dos recaban cientos de dólares al día, a veces hasta más de dos mil dólares. Ella se cree superior a todos sus vecinos y se la pasa hablando de, de otros niños que juegan con sus hijos. Se va de fiesta todos los fines de semana y deja a sus hijos solos en casa. Solo hago esta publicación para que la gente de la comunidad tenga cuidado y no quede víctima a ese tipo de estafa. Ellos fueron deportados a los Estados Unidos y los dos han estado en la cárcel por fraude. And then they have multiple screenshots of my lives, my uh, old TikTok account, your Jeep. They want GRC to shut down so bad. She asked for donations when her mom died. She asked for donations for his fucking birthday. You know, it's like yeah. you're asking, asking, asking. Y cuando ves a alguien que no está, like you're not asking, you're you're fucking doing a raffle. You're not asking, hey, send me money because you know. And they're not even donaciones anymore. Like I don't even push GRC so people don't get it twisted anymore. But even if it was. Even if when no one's donated hundreds and aside Luis, <laughs> no one's donated hundreds of dollars and asked where's it going. You know, like, but oh god, people are just like twisting, twisting, twisting to fit this storyline. And to people that don't, like, you know, people are super cheap also too. Yeah, I think it's funny because you got all the fucking proof. Like, you got all the proof of all the people that have donated. You know. I haven't actually received donations um, for months. Like actual donations. Probably the last donation I received was the Huerva uh, Club, where they funded the Yelapa School Project. Ever since, it's just been coming out of my own pockets. Oh, we weren't even you going! Fuck! <laughs> All that great content. Now it's gonna sound like I'm forcing it. I think these people hate us because we live three minutes away from the beach. Like it was all so natural and now you just ruined it all. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about breakfast. What are we going to eat for breakfast? It kind of uh, killed my energy a bit, not going to lie. But I don't know, that just doesn't feel good to me when it's that close to home. I know. When it's neighbors. When it feels like it feels I feel invaded like when those pictures of my lives are thrown out there like that, like me in the house. And I used to think like, oh I'm you know, I'm safer here, I'm more comfortable, blah blah blah. And now it's like giving the enemy a peek into my home life, you know. It's a bad feeling to have people constantly out to attack you. Like, we were supposed to stay down, you know what I mean? I was supposed to stay down when my account got banned. I was supposed to stay down when I got deported. And I get it, they're just internet trolls, right? People who are clearly obsessed. The amount of hours that has gone into making all these accounts, all these posts, connecting with people locally, reaching for people from my past. I look at it this way, right? Like the Kyle Rittenhouse, like, he shot some people on camera. 
You know, I mean, fuck. I don't, mean, I don't blame the guy. He was getting attacked. But there were so many people like, oh, he's racist. Oh, he's this. He's that. He should die. He should. And he was getting hate mail. But he's still kicking. He's still breathing. We're not going to talk about Kyle. We're not going to agree on Kyle. <laughs> Well, I'm like just saying, like nobody's done nothing to him. Why the fuck are they gonna come do something to me when I didn't? We didn't even have that shit. People want us to serve a life sentence. Well, it was me. Now it's you two because you're in this picture with me. But you've been here what four months now? That has been four months of fuckery. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, I thought there were four pleasant months. How's it? I guess I'm. I'm curious what it's been like through your eyes. It's kind of overwhelming because I feel like I don't get things done. Like, I'm not, like... As active as you were in the States? Yeah. Especially because my phone would go off over there and I was like, oh, I gotta go here. Oh, I gotta go do this. Oh, I gotta do this. Like, there was never one day I was like, well, what the fuck am I gonna do today? Mm-hmm. You know? Do you everywhere, re- everywhere do you I look... living, leaving with no plan? Oh, with no plan, definitely. But I feel like I would have never left if I tried to make a plan. It's scary. Like, now that I'm here, I'm, like, living it. But it's it's like fight or flight, you know? Yeah, I get it. And then, so I'm not... You know, I like, it. I like I like the lifestyle. I like that I can go to the beach, drop off the kids at school, squeeze in a little beach sesh, you know, just to go down there at 45, kill some time, whatever. Like, that's dope. It's dope as fuck to me. I always said I was gonna live where there's palm trees. Fuck, yeah. I got a palm tree tattoo. Um, what's it like uh, being with the kids every day? It's cool. Yeah, I like hanging out with them. It's cool. <laughs> Why do you look Ty. at me? Hi. Fucking kids, you know, you know they can't have a beer yet, so it's just. Hi. Sure. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool, but I feel like... It's been hard to learn to co-parent together. Yeah, it has. Because even back home, like, when, when they would go with you, like, they were only with you, right? Like, we were separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I didn't have to worry about what you were saying or how you were parenting and vice versa because we were, you know, you had your parent time and then, well, the back home, that is. But it has been difficult, like, to... And I think our parenting styles have always been a little different. Mm-hmm. Just because maybe how you were raised or how I was raised, like, you know? Yeah. My dad was always super hard on us and, like, firm, hard, mean at times. And I reflect that a lot. Yeah. You are mean. I mean, I feel, maybe not mean, but I feel like you're harsh. And I'm like, oh, God, he's so hard on them. Just the way you talk to him. Like, those are the little things that have been hard for me to deal with because I'm not used to another person, another parent having to mind another parent, having to take you another parent into consideration, having to, like, like when I yell at the kids, it's cool, but then when you get mad at the kids, I'm like, that's not cool. I know that sounds backwards, it's like, I can do it, but you cannot. So you're, so you've been here four months, what's your relationship like with your family now? And tell us about that, since you left. I feel like my relationship hasn't really changed with the ones that I had a good relationship with. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom, dad, sister, brother-in-law. But, of course, you know, my brother's got his own views. This girl's got his own views. I like so, your relationship with Michelle. How's that changed since you got here? Oh, we haven't, we haven't talked. You guys have talked. Like when we first we got fell here, out. Yeah. we fell out. We just haven't talked since. Where'd you fall out? <laughs> I don't know. We fell out because I don't know. There was a bunch of shit I didn't know she did. It's just a bunch of shit. So she's reaching out for me, like if I'm coming for her, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like this all. You guys fell out because your decision to have a relationship with me. Well, yeah. Um, but you fell out with Michelle really just because of your decision to have any type of relationship with me. This was early on before we even developed any type of relationship, co-parenting or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, True. So a lot of people have asked about your 
about mine and your decision to leave and kind of judged you for, for your quote unquote leaving her um, what's your take on that? what are your feelings and your thoughts? how do you view that situation? I wish I could have done it different, but there was really no other way. You know what I mean? Right. Do you still talk to her? Uh, here and there. She'll call me eventually. But Sabrina's made it. She's, she's made it off. very difficult. Yeah. yeah she's so, cut, she's so although you left, I feel like so when I got deported, I feel like I was still pre very present with my kids in the states, um, even more so than than Bryce at the time. Like I was still, you know, up to date with their school, making their appointments, calling them, such and stuff, etc. So you can still be a parent even though you don't live in the same country, state, whatever. You know what I mean? But um, I feel like I never got access to any of that, even if, even while I was there. Like I, I was never told about parent teacher conference. I wasn't able to go pick her up from school. Like there's so much shit. She, you know what I mean? Like when I would be like, oh, I'm gonna go get her from school. Or, she's sick da, 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 da. like somebody had to go pick her up because I wasn't allowed to the school wouldn't give me no info so you had very limited access to her yeah and something that I think you said to Sabrina when you got here or or me I don't remember who you said it to but you chose to come be with your kids that you could be a part of every day rather than Maria oh well, not rather than but because you were limited in your and being well, a parent. I feel like it doesn't being here doesn't yeah it doesn't it's, it's it was easier to interact and be you told me even when you were back there that i was easier to co-parent from out yeah, here than sabrina are. so that's can you can you expand on that first because i think it gives a bigger picture of your decision to leave although you had a child back in the states i had a child that was like so sabrina's always used mine as a pawn like she's always used her to get her way or get whatever the fuck she wants like she's mad for whatever reason i can't see maya any fucking little thing i do i talk to a certain fucking crowd and she finds out about it i can't see maya because she doesn't like these people because she doesn't this i don't want her around this this bitch i don't want her around that like she always has to control everything and it just gets annoying Right, so even when I met you, I felt like um, she was, the baby was, um, she controlled you. Like when I met you very early on, even before things got ugly, like you did, you, you did certain things to be able to see her, of like to keep her happy, you know what I mean? And I think that's been the narrative for many years that if you and her didn't get along, you couldn't see her, even after you got um, parental rights to her. Oh well, yeah, she's been really fucking good at making it her way or the highway. Like, so I feel like. Um, and the thing is, I get so frustrated that I, I mean, I might not go about it the right way because I get so mad. Like, because it honestly just pisses me off. So then I start being a dick, and then it looks like I'm the bad guy. So I have my own like opinions. I, this is how I view it. And I feel like I understand you because I'm, I'm not going to say I was in a similar situation, but I relate on certain aspects with my kids in my situation. Okay, so for example, the kids, when I got deported, I had the older three up in the States and I was pushing hard to get the babies to me, right? And in my logic, in leaving the older three up there, they, her, they and I had already bonded, right? They were older. I was. They knew who I was. Even if I didn't see them for X amount of time, they knew who I was. We had our bonding time through their baby years. And now they're school-age kids. I said, you know, we're not going to lose that bond no matter what. And, But the reason why I pushed so hard for the babies was because I, I didn't get my bonding time, right? So when you made the decision, now that Maya's a little bit old, how old is Maya? She's eight? Yeah. So you've been in her life for a solid eight years. You've had your bonding time with her, although it's been intermittent because of your issues with Sabrina. She knows who you are. She's not going to forget who you are. She's not going to get confused as to who, you're, who her dad is, right? So I think your decision to, to come here to be with the babies is very like-minded, and I may be wrong, I'm just speculating, 
but you need those bonding years with the babies because they're little you know they were gonna grow up if you weren't here they weren't gonna grow up knowing who you were the phone calls would not be enough them going to visit you every yeah, yeah, summer they even, like, would they not went, be enough like they would only talk to me when they would first come back from seeing me like they would talk to me for the first couple of weeks and then it's like they're, mm -hmm. they're just so busy their little minds are all over the place and yeah. i felt that and it's a shitty feeling you and know? i'm not saying like any child is more important than any child but i am i do think that your bonding time with the babies right now is important just like you had it with maya and you being here while they're little right now um you need that and they needed that and and i kind of and i get it and i i think it, it is a very hard decision it's a very hard situation because i know that you love maya you've been with her you know eight years but at the same time i think you find some solace in knowing she knows who dad is you know what i mean i think yeah. it would hit different it, it hit differently when the babies were out here and Judy's had no idea who you were she didn't know daddy and like she was so tiny and, and now she knows you know what i mean she knows daddy um and that's from you being here just for what four months yeah. you know it's it's um bonding time that is imperative for them to grow up knowing who you are and if you decide to go back in three four years or whatever once the kids are six or however long you know they're gonna know you yeah. and the same thing goes for maya like whether sabrina gets in the way of this relationship and she's cut off access to you and blocked you right now and etc maya knows who you are and she, sabrina can't take that from you and if sabrina's made the decision to alienate her from you that's completely on sabrina because oh yeah I, I agree that i agree with that too like i mean it's hard it's fucked up but, but it's like she i feel like one day she's gonna realize everything everything her mom does to break that bond or to keep her away just like her older daughter like she realizes that she, she will because you know as i i went through you know the shit that i did with my biological father i don't have any memory of my mother my dad can't say your mom kept me from you you know my mom always encouraged our relationship she never spoke ill of my dad um but she also wasn't you know um the one chasing him to be a part of our lives and i don't look at her any different for that i think you know he left on his own and made that decision i mean you have one day when Maya's older and you know those court filings are forever you did fight for her you put up a long fight for her yeah, yeah. and you know again those are things that will never she can't erase and so she, yeah she may be able she may tell her fucked up shit between now and when she's an adult but the truth will always come to light i don't see it as you abandoned her because if sabrina would allow it she would be out here you know she would oh, yeah, she, she would be her. out here just like my kids are going back and forth visiting bryce and she would have the best of both worlds her mom keeping that from her is solely on your mom and i think it's so much easier for for people to say like oh he abandoned her he left her he they, i mean her. people are always gonna judge they're always gonna judge from outside the box and i get that like i've never been one to care what anybody has to say especially like as far as my parenting like i'm not an asshole but i'm also not a fucking like i'm not a i can't because i got my kids because every time i got my kids i'm out there with them like i interact with them i you know like I'm, I'm very hands-on and like you know yeah i'll give you that you're definitely a fun hands-on dad um you get in the pool with them you jump in the ocean with them you get out and kick the ball with them you're hands-on dad like, I <laughs> and they remember that you know those are the things that they hang on to maya's gonna have those memories with you taking your hiking and this and that and oh yeah those aren't things so well, I, that's what i'm saying i feel like that has a lot to do with why she'll never she'll never forget me you know yeah because when the little times that she was with me i made it like i made an impact i guess mm -hmm. you'd say mm. i used to tell myself the same thing when when the kids were up there with my mom and you know it was hard it was a hard decision um and I spent a lot of time away from them and I felt bad, especially when I had the babies here and I didn't have them. But I would find solace in that. Like, they, they're never going to forget me. Like, I've been there every day of their lives. No matter what happens or who ends up with them, if they come or if they don't, they're never going to forget their mom. You know, they're gonna, that bond is, is already there. And I, I mean, it is like a hard situation, but I think it's good for you to be 
building that with the babies too because they need it. Not saying that kids don't need their dad forever or their parents forever, but I mean, that, those, the first years, you know, from the age, from one to, or birth to like six, those, those are like their fundamental bonding years. Oh yeah. Because can you imagine if he had came when they were like eight or nine? When Axel and Dujan were eight or nine? They would look at you, it wouldn't be the same. They wouldn't yeah. warm up to you like this. They would, you would be a stranger, really. If you imagine meeting your dad at eight or nine <laughs> versus, you know, your dad moving away from you at eight or nine, it hits very differently. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see both. It would hurt, you know, if your parent moved away at that age. Like, I, I know it would fucking. It does. And I mean, it never happened to me, but I. It feel happened like to me. Eight. My dad left when I was 10, so I was a little bit older than Maya. It's very traumatic, and she is probably going through it right now she doesn't understand she doesn't understand all of this behind it you know what i mean and i don't know what explanation sabrina has given her but she's definitely hurting and confused and like sabrina's not even trying to try she's not even trying to help her understand or trying to ease it in her my mom said you abandoned me were her fucking exact words and i was like what your mom That's don't funny. listen to that i didn't abandon you yeah, my mom said you abandoned me and left to Mexico. That is so funny. And fun. she was like mad when she was saying yeah. it. She was upset. And I was like, I didn't. So yeah, that is imagine, fucked up. And yeah, that, like, I, I, imagine I've known telling that. your child that. That's fucked. She, you know how she many has times, no fucking feelings. You know Sabrina how many times no I've lied for you because I don't want my kids to be here or feel that. When the kids would ask me about you, I've, I've lied for you so many times. Not because, you know, I'm I'm not because I was team Walter, but because I'm team my kids. And I don't want them to feel abandoned. I don't want them to instill that. Abandonment is for a woman to grow up with abandonment. I am abandonment. I am daddy issues abandonment in the flesh. And it's affected my relationships with men. It's affected my relationships uh, across the board. Like my dad leaving. Yeah, my dad leaving is my core issue. So for a mother to instill that purposely or not try to like, um, like protect her from those feelings is <laughs> fucking weird. And that's Straight. not very motherly this way. Oh yeah, and then, I mean, I knew she was gonna be like, I mean, I've watched her do it with the other baby dad. I've watched her tell her daughter, he doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't want to see you. But like now her other daughter's like, she loves her dad. And like, I mean, I get it, it's her dad. But it's like, I've watched her, I've watched, I watched her say that shit to her daughter. And I'm like, damn, don't, don't say that, don't do that. Like you, you're breaking your little girl's heart. Why would you want to do that? And maybe it has to do with the fact she doesn't get along with her dad. Like that's their own fucking personal shit, but don't. Project that to your kids. Yeah, don't ruin your kid's relationship with their dad over your, you know failed relationship or rocky relationship whatever it is yeah i think maybe i'm hopeful that with some time she will um come to you know when her and i were getting along she would i shit you not talk she would she wanted my to come out here she but wanted my to come about, out that's here that's the thing about a person like sabrina she's cool as fuck and tells you what you want to hear because she's so precise so clever so deceiving but when her and i talked for that good year like she even i don't i don't think you guys were talking at the time but she even was going to ask ashley to bring her to me and let her spend a week with me and the babies so she could see the babies like we would talk about it all the time about Maya coming down here, and then she even said if you ever got deported that she would only feel okay with Maya coming if I was close by. I know, but like I told you before, like some people say shit, like they just say it to sound good or like you know make themselves like ah que se sientan, but they don't yeah. say shit from the heart. They don't. I, but I really believed her, and you know uh, I. I don't. I I had that image like yeah one day Maya's gonna be here with you know her siblings. Um, yeah, but one everything day, she, one day everything. she will be here, but the people that are going to facilitate that or the people that are going to make that happen is either going to be my family or her mom or her dad because they're the ones. The Sabrina's left, mom and dad are, are the ones that like actually care about my feelings. Yeah. Sabrina's like. I don't know how to explain it. Like, her issues with her dad will not allow her to fucking. 
will not allow her to see that mine and Maya's bond is like that strong, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be her parents or my parents or somebody in my family that like finally like just picks at it, picks at it until she's just like fucking take, just do whatever, I don't care. It's not because she's gonna want to do it or like finally see, you know, like, oh yeah, maybe she doesn't need him. No, she's just gonna be like, just fucking do whatever, I don't care. Just take or whatever. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. Um, something's got to give and she, I don't think that you're not ever going to see her again because like, she she has to be asking about you to talk to you well, even like every, if time we, every time we talk she's always talking about she wants to come down she wants to go to the beach she wants to this she wants to that so right now and you I always say the same her. thing like talk to your mom well we'll see well you got to talk to your mom talk to your mom talk to your mom you don't have communication with Sabrina right now no she won't <laughs> She blocked you. She blocked me off everything. So there's really no way for you to arrange that. Unless it's through Maya, which or, is sad. Or through my sister, but my sister doesn't like to get involved into a bunch of shit either. Nobody wants to get involved in that mess because it's so much. Like, it has yeah, to be you and Sabrina that come together. And well, nobody wants to get involved with Sabrina because she sounds like... It's like, I don't know, she's a little fucking... She always threatens and this and that. And yeah, I know. I've been there. I dealt with her too. You know, like, mm -hmm. nobody... I mean, she might not want to do it, but nobody wants to go with, through that, like, mental stress of Fight having her. to deal with her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, that smells so good. A part of me is like, push back, push back, push back. And then another part of me is like, how much how much of this is real life and how much of this is just social media? Like, you know? It's just like it's so easy to get sucked into social media, especially this type of suckery. And I think sometimes you lose the, the line of reality. Like, how much of it matters and how much of it is an actual threat? Like this. A part of me, like I said, I want to keep pushing. I want to, put, like, I'm angry about it. A lot of my energy lately has been just fuck you guys, you know. And it makes me want to push back harder. But then I'm like, okay, where is the line of reality? At what point uh, am I risking myself, my children, and my livelihood, my safety for this, for this, you know? I don't think I'm even concerned about like oh people coming after us. I think it's the the, the bubble we're living in of hate, you know? The kids are gonna be living in. And this is, the, this is the cost of like, sharing my story. These are all repercussions of it. I mean, we've had a lot of good things happen to us because of it. And people keep telling me, you know, you get what you put out. This is not what I've been putting out. I've been, I have not been putting out this energy. People have nothing better to do. <laughs> like you really think all the people that are hating and fucking paying attention to Julia and her narrative got a good life, got a decent life, the bitch sits there and eats all fucking day on this fucking live. Smacks her lips. Like those are people that got nothing better to do with their life. Like wow, like wow, it's like this is the cost of, of growing, of success. I don't know. Uh, like, they, they, look. I mean, if you want, you should check out for a little bit. Cause there, a guy sees you driving or walking at the mall, they're like, oh, yeah, she's got something. And they're going to feel a lot easier to run up on you or try to take your purse or something than they would on me. So, I mean, you know, it's not that I'm not scared. Yeah, of course. If something big does happen, if some big shot does happen, it comes at me, you'll get scared. But it's like, you get taken as it comes. You, it's a little more, it's a little different because when you're outside, you're always with one of the kids. Yeah, that's why I'm vulnerable. You're with the kids, you're with this, so it's going to be a lot easier to try to attack you. And I think it's just all this hate is just, I get it, they don't like you, but it's like, why try to do something good for everybody else out here? Like, they're not just hurting you, they're hurting the little kids, they're hurting the, you know, cool the out of that big for people. People are not fucking humans. They're just sitting at home eating Cheetos off of TVT. 
something, not the easy team. It's true though. I've never I've, on there with. I've never experienced this level of bullying in my life. Ever. Like this level of You know of, what it is? It's all the people that got bullied in high school sit there behind a the keyboard and act like keyboard warriors because half the fucking people that are on their shit talking shit they're always blocked they don't have nothing to show they're like they always hide everything you know what I mean? yeah so, like, like I keep saying thing, I'm frustrated like, because I'm like this is not the energy I've been putting out this is not the karma I've been putting out I've been putting out good I've been putting out sweat blood and tears and time away from my kids for this shit that's why it's um, you know when I was back doing stupid shit I got it like I I sat in a jail cell I was like this, this is all me you know this is all me and, and it it was easier to cope with because I knew I was partly responsible yeah. if not all way the all the way responsible but this is hitting different because I, I'm not there anymore and I don't want to stay there but you know when I got here and I was like this is a fresh start nobody knows me nobody's in a situation like a felon. And, and it's here. It's not all over again. Like the fresh start is gone. And, and that's partly also my fault because I, I, I started talking about my life again, my past. That's like, what people hate. People hate you and they look at you differently when you're transparent. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. Like you're telling your story, you told what happened, you're telling this, you did this, I did this, I did that, I'm doing this. But all those bitches are all private, they all hire all their shit because they, they all got skeletons in the closet. Who does it? Yeah. You know what I mean? I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away Too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. 